Hello, I'm Casey Aiken, and this is 21 This Week. Coming up next, County Council selects Sydney Katz as its new council president. Are boundary changes the best way to ensure equal opportunity for all MCPS students? And did former Governor Martin O'Malley be clown himself at the Gonzaga Smoker? Stay tuned. Our panel of insiders will give you the story behind the story. We're joined by the past president of Progressive Maryland, Elbridge James. Maryland Young Republican National Committeeman, Evan Young. Transportation and Railway Consultant, Phil Bell. And education activist, Cynthia Rubenstein. Stay tuned for these stories and more on the next 21 This Week. Each December, the presidency of the County Council rotates for the upcoming year to a new member. Monday, District 3 Council member and former mayor of Gaithersburg, Sidney Katz, was elected to lead the council for the next year. And District 5 Council member Tom Hucker was elected as vice president. Cynthia, outgoing council president Nancy Navarro, cited, cited the passage of Racial Equity and Social Justice Act, the enactment of the Crown Act, and the authorization of a lawsuit against e-cigarette manufacturers among her many accomplishments this past year. How would you rate her term in office? I thought she did a great job. You know, there were four new members of the county council, um, a new administration and a new county executive. Um, and it was a relatively uh, trouble-free year on the county council. You know, the biggest challenge every year for the council president is the budget. And she was a very able steward at the top of the county council. But isn't it easy to lead a council when there's no opposing voice on that council, that all of the members seemed to be of the same mindset? You still have to move things through, and you still have to get them in a state that they, where they can be passed. So I thought um, the... Now, this um, is her last term in office. That's correct. What's her future? Well... Um, I would not be surprised if she and maybe other members of the council whose terms are expiring might be looking to run for to executive. Hire executive. I'm is... not going to say that explicitly. <laughs> well, I like I like putting words in your possible. mouth. It's so possible. I'm good at that. But I haven't asked her. I'm just just. Starting All right. Well, let room. me go to Elbridge. Elbridge, you know, Sydney Katz is thought of as a pro-business moderate. So, what could be expected during his? year leading the council? I spoke to Sydney on Wednesday and we were at the Minority Business Breakfast, Chamber of Commerce Business Breakfast. Uh, <clears throat> Sid hopes to fact to, to work with the county executive uh, to show that in fact Montgomery County can be more business friendly. They believe they've gotten a bad rap and they're, they're making concentrated efforts. They're having uh, town hall meetings and they're trying to meet with several business leaders to in fact change the environment and get feedback. But, but, but Elbridge, this is a bad rap. This has been a, a broken record for the past 15 years that Montgomery County is not friendly to business. How, is, how are they going to change the image? Okay, I see business doing very well in Montgomery County. Yeah, there's a rap, but there's the reality. And in fact, if you're not willing to change or, or accept the fact that that rap is out there, then you'll get no progress. I, I prefer to have progress made and then judge on what they do or don't do. Well, I thought it was impressive that in his first announcement, he did emphasize economic development and the importance of economic development. And of course, that was his reputation as the, as the mayor of, of Gaithersburg, that, that he was pro-development, reasonable development. Is that correct? That's correct. But also give the county exec some credit because, in fact, he understands what the perception is, and he's willing to go ahead and, and, and meet that. Well, that's that's a that's a tougher row for him for him to ch make that change because of his past past reputation. He's the exec now. He leads all, not just his his districts. Okay. Well, if he believes it, I'm I'm happy to hear that. Evan, the council adopted the creation of the Policing Advisory Commission this week. How is this commission going to make our communities safer? I mean, the simple answer is it it isn't. This is unlike some other similar ones that have been done throughout the country. This one in Montgomery County has no authority to investigate or prosecute uh, complaints against officers. They have really no say in 
creating the policy or changing laws. They have no authority. What you've basically done is create the comment section on police videos and put them in a room. So they'll have suggestions. They'll look at policy. They'll make suggestions about best practices, but nothing they actually say or do has to be listened to, followed whatsoever. So there's nothing to say that they will change anything. And if we're talking about what makes the, the county safer, we've looked at the increase in violence, the increase in violence crimes, overwhelmingly more likely that they happen, they have a gang tied to it. Gang members committing these crimes, the victims, also other immigrants most of the time, and they don't want to talk about that. This will do nothing about that. It'll just focus on what cops are or aren't doing correctly, but again, have no authority to actually do anything. Well, Albert, it seems that the impetus for this, this commission was because there was a feeling that in the, the uh, minority community that they are being targeted by police for minor crimes. Is this going to address that issue as well? This whole police commission is a start. It's not the end product, it is the start of the, of the process. And I would say I differ with you because, in fact, if the gang population is, is, is targeting our minority residents and our immigrant residents, the commission will allow those residents some outlook or some out release so that, in fact, they can go to somebody and talk about it. Well, the police already know it. that's it is the still, case. But it's still consumer populate friendly. Uh, and for those who may not, from there, well, where but, they but come from, does, they may how do, But isn't this just really just putting a microscope on police activities and, and acting as, as a, you know, to, as, as a, a question as to whether or not the police are performing their job properly? This isn't really giving the, the community an additional voice. Yes, it is. Yes, it and is. it's yeah. giving, it's, it's giving a, a, it's bringing in representatives of a broad swath of Montgomery County in order to, to sit down at a yes. table across the table from law enforcement and talk over policies and how they <clears throat> impact both the community and um, policing. It's a way to build a bridge between the two. And there is, um, there is, a, there is a feeling now in a lot of uh, communities in Montgomery County that the police are not trusted and the police don't trust the community. And so that's what this advisory group will well, provide an wait, opening. But, but won't this, uh, Phil, I yeah. want to ask you, but I mean, Cynthia just touched on the lack of trust. Won't this exacerbate the distrust on behalf of the police, uh, the police force as to that the community is out to get them? I do think it will, but here's the more important thing. What you said earlier, you said that there are some folks that think they're being targeted for minor crimes. The part of that that makes it's worth talking about is crimes. If they're crimes, if you're committing them, you should have the law enforced on you. That's the important thing. If you don't like the law, the question really isn't should we sit down and talk to the police about it, it's should we talk to the politicians about it and change what the laws are. Now the unfortunate thing that no one wants to talk about is the majority of these laws that are being broken and the discussions that are being had are things such as whether we're talking about theft or violence or otherwise where if you were to say yeah you know what we want to make it legal to go ahead and steal stuff out of your store most people would say that's absurd and we're not going to do it and that's really what the issue is stop committing crimes you're going to stop seeing the police well in the dramatic the dramatic uh, story that occurred last year where there were there were three african-american males stopped outside of mcdonald's for basically for loitering or for, for using smoking marijuana, that became a, became a, a symbol for many of poli police overaction, overreaction. For, marijuana is illegal. I it's, understand it's that. It's illegal. So if but you're Phil, smoking it, but it's, it but it's, if no, you're Phil, outside but smoking Phil, it, Phil, Phil, I'm, I, I, if I I've had this look, history, Phil, well, I've, it's, I've been it's in, illegal. I've, I've been in so, I've, I've, wait. I've, I've been in Bethesda. I've been off. I've been down the street from Churchill High School. Okay. The police act differently if you in fact you have resources or they believe you come from better homes you get treated differently don't do the wrong thing and it won't matter it's no, it, not but, even no, but doing it does the wrong matter. thing it it's being matter. tailed well, if I, you're in downtown silver spring and you're a group of uh, students of color being tailed by the police correct. and being a, and having the assumption that you're going to do something. Here's a quick story. Years ago, there was a store where I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, and every year the Florida A&M, the black students, would go in and they would steal stuff from the store. So eventually, at that store, they started monitoring them, and that created a whole ruckus of people saying, oh, this is unfair. They did it every year. You said, look, 
those people are probably going to come commit crimes. So let's watch them and make sure they don't commit crimes. Look, I want to so do we, it. We got we got we got to move on to another another topic, which is an important one. Cynthia, State Senator Robert Zirkin of Baltimore resigned unexpectedly, and he was being replaced by Will Smith of Montgomery County. How, is this a good thing for the county? This is an excellent thing for the county. This is an excellent thing for the legislature and for the committee. Will Smith is my state senator from District 20, and he is an honorable, decent, and smart legislator, and he's going to do a great job as chair of this committee. That's good to hear. Now, Elbridge, as you know, here, here in Montgomery County, oh, here it comes. What do we do? We love our trees, right? Don't we love our trees? Yes, we do love our trees. We do love our trees. So what should happen to an undocumented immigrant who cut down one of those cherished trees without a permit? That was arrested by the state police, not the Montgomery County police. Okay. The state police. And unfortunately, he was held and now in ICE detention. And he has the fear of being deported. Has a clean record up to this point. Yes, but in fact, yes, he, he helping a friend out cut down a tree that basically was rotting, but they didn't get a proper permit. And that's what caused the, the, the problem. Now, for, for his act of kindness, he's, he's basically in a, in a prison situation, a detention situation, fighting deportation. Yeah. And DNR we, overstepped their we, bounds. We got it, we got They're it. not supposed to pick somebody, take somebody, unless there is a criminal or a judicial um, Correct. warrant. Well, we're gonna have to, get, we're gonna have to go, uh, break, and when we come back from this short break, School boundary issues continue to divide the county. And why did former Governor Martin O'Malley and Ken Cuccinelli at the uh, Gonzaga Smoker get into an altercation? Stay tuned to find out. And welcome back. Decisions which impact the Montgomery County public school system are always hot topics, and there is none hotter than the MCPS district-wide school boundary analysis, which has sparked outrage at public forums. The impetus for the boundary was, was uh, created by a former student board member, Anaya Takanda, excuse me, I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name correctly, who alleged that there was a de facto segregation in the Montgomery County public schools. So Cynthia, MCPS is one of the largest and most diverse school districts in the country. Yet, as the district has grown, so too have the pockets of students in poverty, and there are certain demographics which are not getting uh, as much uh, opportunity as they should. But is playing musical chairs with the school boundaries the best way of allocating those resources and of desegregating schools? It can, I think it can be a useful tool. I think the fear and outrage mm -hmm. among uh, certain parts of the parent community is absolutely <coughs> unwarranted. Um, what is likely to happen is changes around the edges to improve some of the, to lower some of the um, percentages of low income students in schools to improve utilization of schools, which saves taxpayers money Correct. and um, helps with this school overcrowding issue. Um, but it is, it is a tool. And I'll tell you, the part of Montgomery County that is not so upset about this is the student community. They welcome the diversity in their schools. They appreciate the value of diversity in the schools and making sure that we don't have, um, I mean, Montgomery County overall is diverse in the school system, but if you look at particular schools that are 90% white with maybe 15% low-income families, and not that far away, you have schools that are 90% um, students are, are of color, real are those, and real those are real statistics. Wait, those what are school real is 90% white right next to a 90% black school? You're Which talking about a 90% white school, but here's the reality. There's no such thing as white people. There's a lot of different people that come from different backgrounds, and they happen to have skin tones that are similar. And th all of this discussion is simply taking away from the reality of what the schools are, which is a place where you're supposed to go and learn, not a place where you're supposed to be socially engineered. Studies well, what, uh, will tell you that schools that are truly diverse, that have a mix of incomes and a mix of backgrounds of students, 
but, but are what, beneficial but what, but what, for what all schools the students. in Montgomery County don't have any diversity. I mean, you look at a you look at a school like Churchill. There's a heavy population of Asian students there. Does that make them less diverse than a, than a, than look, a, than, look, than a Wooten look or at a the, Look at the socioeconomic mix as well. Well, how do you, how do you how do you address socioeconomic changes Casey, in neighborhoods wait, 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 which are primarily based on the value of your houses? But, Casey, but Casey, nobody you, gives that. you a promise but, when you buy there. a house that nothing is ever Correct. going to change ever. No one's saying that they can't change. The question is how do you how do you make a diverse community all solely based on skin color or 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 economics? It's not, you solely, do it? it's not solely. It's if you look not at, solely. If you look at the, the latest uh, statistics and the latest population counts, Poolsville is, is over 50% overcrowded. Sherwood is 50% or half underutilized. And so the biggest complaints are being how to move folks from, from Poolsville to Northwest and move folks then down and to you know Sherwood. Why is Poolsville o overcrowded? Because they're building houses in Poolsville. But there's fact, a demand but for, in fact, if I, demand if for I, if I, if I, if I need to give you the there's best education, there's a demand education, for affordable housing. Then you have to move. Then you have to move well, students. It's, and the students, it's interesting, and the students Albert, you brought up Poolsville because Poolsville is one of the most successful high schools in Montgomery County. It's been recognized by by Newsweek magazine as the leading STEM school in Montgomery County. You we don't have enough of them. Overcrowding students does not give them the best resources for in, in education. And that's then it's not true. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If a school can take 100 students and then how has 150 students, logic tells you students are, are not getting the best education. No, why, well, why, is, why, 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 why is that axiomatic? That's not uh, exactly right, Casey. One of the, I went to a very heavily overcrowded school. Now, I know some of you might say, well, you know, you're not very intelligent, but the reality is we had just as much an opportunity to interact with the teachers, fellow students, and otherwise as you and would I would say else. some of you, uh, some of the students. Anyone who chose to. Some, anyone who and, chose and, to. No, no. Uh, in, in, no. In, in, in our society, we can't afford for people to choose. It, yes, you can afford no, to no, choose. No, we, That's what life is women, about. Students, you can choose no, no, if you want at, to. At 10 years old, at 15 years yes. old, they have a right to choose? Yeah, yeah they have, no, they I have, have, I have well, a right to choose. No, I have a right to choose. It is I the parents that have the right the to put their, available. Their, their, to choose the to. school for their for their children. It's not the kid. It's the parents. The parents are going to make that decision. But the parents need to base it more than just because I base it more on skin color. I mean, you know, it has to be more than skin color. It has to be the best opportunity for those kids, and in a school system that does very well. Well, I, I, this is, I want to go to I, Evan. I, Evan, there's an alarming statistic which says that in the past 20 years, with all of the money that's being dumped into education, mm -hmm. that U.S. students are falling behind their international counterparts. They're 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 basically treading water on on English and language skills and they're falling behind on mathematics. So what is the answer? Is that in Montgomery County? Is that in Montgomery County? You know, Elbridge, there are statistics that say that, that you want to say that U.S. News and World Report, you know, a rate we have Montgomery the best County. schools oh, in, the, in the area. We are, th th that is a false statistic, because the statistic that has to be measured is what happens after those graduates leave Montgomery County, and whether or not they're able to uh, exist in a college environment or in a work environment. Correct. And, and, and we don't have and, those and diversity. The, you, we're, preparing, we're preparing our students to go in the workplace and work with everyone, not just a certain race, not, not with You're, a certain economic group. They need to be prepared to work with everyone. That's exactly and how right. In the world are they going but to do it? They're not going to be able to work how, everywhere how if, if there isn't a rigorous, I work, I work a rigorous, in and we had this problem no, no, with students I, coming from how, segregated schools. Explain to me how it is that you are unprepared just be, to be in a working environment just because of the skin color of the other people in the school. If you're it not culturally, it, it, you know, it does, no. wait a minute, I've, I've had right. experience with yeah. it. the University of Maryland is now. A center of diversity because they're seeing their students ill prepared to come and work with people from different backgrounds and different cultures. This isn't and the and 80s, it, it's not the 70s, it's not the 60s. Everyone has, because of the access to the various media, our mobile phones, you name it. You are bathed in other cultures. But that's exposure. Look, that's that's exposure. not experience. It's exposure exactly. and experience. That's not relationships. That's oh, not you knowing. You don't build relationships in math class.
Huh? You don't yes, build relationships do. in math class. I didn't build a relationship with a single person in math class. Well, now, so in this fairness, is, this it depends on how attractive women, women, women are. I want to no introduce man. something here because we only have a minute, a little over a minute left. And there are those who think that the public education system needs additional competition. That, that we need, <laughs> you, 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 we need so charter you schools <laughs> that have proven to be successful and greater competition which allows parents the choice of where to send their kids. Wait a minute, in Montgomery County? In Montgomery County. I'm not arguing about what they may do in New York City, what they may do in Atlanta or San Francisco. I'm saying in Montgomery well, County. Do we, have failing, citizens, do we have failing schools in Montgomery County? Yes or we, no? Do we have failing schools? Yes. Not to the level we have in, in all these other jurisdictions. Do I, we have failing schools in Montgomery County? I do not think so. But you're. Uh, I do not think so. And I believe when you have a school that does meet expectations and they are regularly checked, that there are steps that are taken to bring that school district up wait, to the level. Earlier you're saying because the school's overcrowded and the kids aren't going to have the opportunities they need. Now you're saying the Montgomery County schools are really great and everything is okay. And puppies because and they adjust. We can't. Because they, can't they adjust. Be both ways. Yes, so, it can. Yeah, we, what's they, wrong with having charter schools? Because we adjust. Oh, that's right. a great. The if idea of competition. If there's a need in the, New Orleans, right. in New York, there wait, wait, was a need. A need. There's not a need here. And, and in D.C. But here's there's something about charter schools. You, no, we why? talk about Based the exception what? of the charter schools in New York City, but they're the exception. Overall, charter schools. We run, ladies and gentlemen, we've, we, we've, okay. we're passionate on this <laughs> and because it deals with our kids, but we've run out of time. And we've run out of time to ask, my, for me, to even ask my favorite question about what happened at the Gonzaga smoker between Martin O'Malley and Ken Cuccinelli, you know? You just mispronounced our former governor's last name. Oh, I'm purpose. sorry. <laughs> Did I? I made a mistake. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. So we got to stay tuned for parting shots. When we come back from the short break. Welcome back. Now with parting shots, Elbridge James. My parting shot is I'll be so happy when the football season is over with. I am a diehard Eagles fan, and I'm just in purgatory right now. If they lose to the New York Giants on Sunday, I really will be in hell. Uh, well, thank you, Albridge. And, you know, by coincidence, we're going to a huge Redskin fan, Evan Young, for his parting shot. But I will use my parting shot to touch on what we didn't get to. Former Governor O'Malley, it brings me no joy to say we are seeing a man spiraling, spiraling hard. Former Governor, then presidential candidate who got a few more votes than all of us did. And now he's running around bars at almost 60 years old, yelling at people, chasing them, trying to fight everyone. It's a good reminder that President Trump donated his third quarter salary to fighting addiction. I wouldn't speculate it's very responsible to do so, but if other people are thinking that maybe if the former governor has some issues, while he couldn't hit 12% in the polls, I hope he can hit all 12 steps if needed and uh, combat whatever demons he may or may not be facing. Thank you. Phil Bell, your parting shot. Well, this, ye this week I got some great news. It appears that Steve Cohen, hedge fund billionaire, will be buying a controlling stake in the New York Mets. Now, most of my friends have been out there pillaring the current Mets ownership, and frankly, they do deserve to be pilloried somewhat. They did give money to Bernie Madoff, and they're still paying Bobby Bonilla 20 years after he left the team. But you've got to admit, they did do some good. That's three World Series since uh, Mr. Wilpon has been the head of the team, and also set the team up for what could be years and years of success, so I don't have to listen to Casey talk about the Nationals anymore. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Phil. But I think Cynthia is, is the, the uber Nats fan here. I am. Uh, I just I love him. She really loves him. Cynthia Rubenstein, your part in Yeah, I'm not going to talk about sports, although I could talk about the Nats for hours, days. Um, but I want to talk about the season for giving, and I want to talk about it in conjunction with local media. And Montgomery County Media um, could be one of the uh, recipients of your generosity. If you like this show, if you care about local media and local news, um, please give generously. I want to do a shout out for three other local news sources. Bethesda Beat with one of the best education reporters on the beat, Caitlin Peets. And I want to talk about Source of the Spring and I have to wrap it up. But yeah. please give generously to local media and news. Well, Cynthia, you are so right that Montgomery Community Media is your best source 
for news, both on its website and, on, and, and online. So thank you for that plug. I wish people would be generous. I want to thank you. This has been a great discussion. We covered a lot of territory. There's a lot of passion here. It's very important to remember that we're all in this together. And I want to thank the audience for tuning in each and every week to Montgomery County's hardest-hitting political talk show. For 21 This Week, I'm Casey Aiken.